Hello and welcome. My name is Matthew and this is Mandy and I believe Mandy's never painted before in watercolour, is that correct? No, that's right, yeah. So this is going to be our first ever watercolour painting. Yep, first go. Let's get down to it then. First of all, you've got a sheet of watercolour paper there. Mm -hmm. Now that's floating around at the minute. We need to get it stuck down to your board. So if you could just put some masking tape on all four edges. Yep. Now, the reason Mandy's doing this is purely and simply because it stops the paper moving. It stops the paper going all wavy and cockly when you start doing the watercolour painting. So is it just on the edges? Yeah, if you can do all four edges for me, it's not got to be neat and tidy or anything. You'll end up losing just a little tiny bit of your painting when you're doing this, but that's, that's fine. Now, the watercolour paper that Mandy's using has got a slight textured surface to it. All watercolour paper has a textured surface. And it's a special paper that's designed for the actual paint to settle in, to sit on the surface to start with, so you can manipulate it a little bit and then eventually it will actually settle in to the paper when it dries off. Excellent job. So now what we need to do is get some colours mixed and then we can get straight in and get started with the painting. Normal tap water, no frills. The paints themselves, what we're working with, we're working with three colours for this particular painting. Take the lid off, put a little tiny blob of each colour in the circular wells. The colours we're going to be working with, I'll talk about those as we do the painting, but basically you've got three colours there, blue, yellow, red. These are primary colours. Yep. And pretty much you can mix any colour you want from these three colours, apart from black and white. But of course in watercolour painting, the white is the paper, so that's fantastic. So, what we're going to do is put a little tiny bit of the blue, if I give you this first. So the largest brush for this? Yeah, this is round about a size 10, it's a pointy brush. It's a pointy brush. So basically, put your brush on your water first. Nice healthy blob. The hair is designed to soak up the actual water. Okay. And then put a blob opposite the blue. Put some water. A couple of blobs of water, that's fine. Keep going, a little bit more. That's it, keep piling it up as you do it. Then we'll start to get the colour. Okay, now we don't need to mix any colours together for this because what colours are sky? Blue, mm -hmm. so that's ideal. Just pick up a little tiny blob of the blue on the brush and then mix it in with the water okay. and you'll see the paint goes quite a long way as you do this and you can keep adding little blobs of colour. Now as regards how much colour do you need yeah. that's a difficult thing to pick mm -hmm. up at first but it's something you'll get definitely, it's something you'll pick up over time. Okay. Not too much paint, plenty yeah. of water when you're doing a sky. Okay. It's always better to mix more colour than you think you need just yeah. in case you run out of colour. Yeah, because you can't get the same colour back into you the You can't, palette. absolutely, you can't match the colour. Mm. And also, if you're painting wet into wet, as you will learn very shortly, mm. what will happen is the colour will dry very quickly. So if you're stressing about getting the colour mixed, oh, yeah. that's dry and you're thinking, you know, when you get in that situation, yeah. okay? So that's the blue for the sky, that's great. Okay. Back in the water with the brush. Give it a good clean, dig it down to the bottom. Don't be afraid about giving your brush some hammer. That's what they meant for. And then what we'll do is put some water next door. Actually, probably leave a little gap because the blue might run into it. Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah, so it's leave gone a gap. Over the side there. Yeah, that's right. Put a little bit of water just in that position there. Just okay. the same kind of quantity as well for this yeah. one. Okay. Get that in there. Now, we're going to do a little bit of a evening, maybe sunset -y type sky. So, what we can do put some of the bright yellow, put a blob, as before, yep. of the bright yellow, mix it with the water, that's it, and again, trying to match the consistency. Yeah, so it's quite... Yeah, so it's like a medium pale, really. It's something you pick up over yeah, time, what yeah. strength of colour to mm -hmm. go for, you know. You'll get it pretty quickly. Is that about right? That seems pretty good to me. Before the paint goes onto the paper, what we're going to do is do something called the wet into wet technique. Now the wet into wet technique is perfect for watercolour skies, landscape skies. Pretty much every painting I've done over the past know, 10 years has been a nice wet into wet because all the colours flow and it just... Okay. Um, so that's ready for action then. Nice deep breath and then we can go for it. Uh, clean brush and then put water on the paper. Okay. Okay. Now not by tipping it on, <laughs> but I get your brush and then what I want you to do is I want you to swirl it on. So swirl it, twist your brush, keep dipping it back in again, go along the paper, go along the paper as you do it, and then do the second row. And you can see, move your head around, you can yeah, see that the light's bouncing off, and you can see any bits you've missed. Okay. 
it's quite nice to get one or two little bits that you've missed because it gives your sky that little bit more character okay you know like a bit of cloud breaking through yeah. or something like yeah. that so we can just twist this on so quite a bit of water yeah i mean the brush we're using is a number 10 mm -hmm. which is not going to over soak it one thing I wouldn't do to start with is use a big, big, chunky brush because it puts yeah. a bit too much on yeah. and your paper goes a little bit wavy. And but is that's it all the part of it. Higher the number, the bigger the brush then? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. What you need to do is once you've covered the entire paper with the water, move your head around again, look at yeah, the places see. where it's back. Yeah, yeah so I can see yours is dry at the top. So put some more some water more. there, it yeah. It needs to be wet. Or... Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Every watercolour paper is different. Um, they all give a different drying time, if you like. Now I'm just whizzing over quite loosely, making sure it's all covered, you know. So that is Does it perfect. Sand, yours looks quite <clears throat> wavy, is it? Does it? Yeah, I think I put a bit more water on than you. Now what, what happens with watercolour painting is it goes a little bit wavy, and that's perfectly fine. What, does it go, go level in when time? It dries, when it dries, yeah. Right. The masking tape is helping keeping it a little bit tight, yeah. okay? Yeah. So do, I, do you think I need to put more on? I think you're spot on there, okay? So, tissue at the ready. Okay. <laughs> that's the artist's best friend, that wiping your brush up on your brow. <laughs> Isn't it? So that's, that's fine, ready for painting. You've got probably two minutes tops to get your sky painted yeah. in, which is actually quite a long time, to be honest. Mm. So the cleanest colour will always go on first, which is the yellow, the purest, the brightest colour. Yeah. Okay? okay? This is yellow ochre, this colour. And what I want to do with this, pick up a fair bit of colour, but as you pick your paint up, it's nice just to wipe it on the side okay. of your palette so it's not over soaked, yeah. so it's not splodging all over the place. Okay. Is it just on the tip or the whole brush? Try and get the, the whole, whole brush, brush loaded yeah. up if you can, yeah, okay. please. That's it. So the bottom half of the sky, put your brush at this side mm -hmm. and put it on and just twist. Twist it across, leave a gap. When your brush goes empty, pick some more colour up. And twist again, leave a gap. Try and imagine you've got these fluffy clouds happening in your sky. Mm. Don't keep it so much as a line. Oh, right. Try and break up a little bit, okay? okay? Just... Does it matter if it's patchy? Or... No, that's good. No, that's great. It is, yeah. That's more interesting to do that. But if you notice, when the paint goes onto the, the wet paper, it's starting to run downhill. We've got a slight tilt on the board. The board is actually yeah. angled back, so it's running down slightly. That's better to do that, okay? okay. So do I need to sort of fill those? Or I think we'll leave the top and get there. the blue clouds coming down, but what we can do is put some swirly bits down towards the bottom. Okay. Okay, so it's a very loose technique. Number 10 brush, plenty of colour, and just twisting and swirling, and your colour starts to spread. Where it's going a bit dry, that's fine. It's what the sky is, is what you're going to get, yeah. basically. Okay, just going to put me brush on some tissue. Just wipe it through. Okay. If, like me, you've got a little bit of a puddle oh. at the side, you've got a little bit there, yeah. this dry brush is like a sponge and you okay. can just very lightly just glide over the top and just soak up any bits where it's starting to gather a bit. Yep. Excellent. Okay. Still working in that it mode because it <laughs> it's like a sponge, yeah. yeah. It is like a sponge. Clean brush. Get some blue on there before the paper dries mm. completely. Okay. So it's got to be quick while it's still. That's quick. right. You're working with the actual paper drying on you. Okay. We'll get the blue. That's it. Same thing, but start right in the top corner, whichever corner suits you, yep. and just swizzle across with the colour. And then we're going to get the colours mixing together when they touch. Okay. Now the interesting thing is with yellow ochre and the blue, which is French ultramarine blue, is they won't go green when they touch together. People think yellow, blue, green. Mm. But it actually goes more grey, and that's because it's a dark yellow. Right. Okay. So if it was a lighter yellow, it would be green. Might get a green sky, which is not good, is it? Not good green. So we can twist, twist away again. Get your colours touching, like this. Okay. Get some greys, get all these things working together. And then, it's nice at this point, just to spend a little bit of time just working away. You can relax now because you've got your colour on, and you can just spend a bit of time playing with your sky, let's say. So we can just work in and just put some... Do we need blue further down then? Or... Yeah, continue it through your picture as you do it. Okay. That's right, yeah. You've got it. See how it goes darker? Yeah. That's spot on because you get like cloudy it's effects. Running. and. Is that okay when it runs like that? That's fine. You want it all to run and slop yeah. on and move around and everything else and just twist a little bit. And if you need to get some more blue, your paper's still wet, so you get some more blue if you need to do that. 
if you're thinking your colour's not dark enough, then just put some more colour. Okay, okay, but I think you're okay there, aren't Is you? It? Not yeah. too bad. That's fine, yeah. So we can just twizzle a little bit more. So that's kind of a bit of a blustery sky, but it's your first one. It's spot on. But at the minute, what I feel you need to do is just put some water on your brush, nice and clean. Wipe it on some tissue so it's not too wet. That's it. Now, little bits where you've got the hard lines, just put a little bit of water on the edges, just to try Blend and yeah, just to try and soften them in a touch, eh? Okay. Blend it. Take it into the yellow. We'll get the colours mixing together. Yeah. That's it. And the, does it matter if I go on to the... No, no, that's fine. Get oh, it okay. all working together. They're quite natural colours, these, so they do work well together. Yeah. So you don't want any sharp edges? You can get away with sharp edges, and they do look nice in your sky, but not too much. I mean, this is lovely, this piece there. Yeah. You know, it's quite a nice yeah. breaking effect yeah. you've got there, yeah? Is that too harsh? That's hard? maybe a little bit too yeah. harsh, yeah. That's it, lovely. So the colours are all softening in. Yeah. That Maybe one. this is a little bit, That's a bit hard, yeah. yeah. Should what we I saw wet this again? Yeah, clean it, wipe it on the tissue first so it's not too wet. If you put water straight onto this, what will happen is you'll get what you call a cauliflower where the actual damp water runs back into the paint and it gives a funny speckled edge effect, right. which is sometimes quite nice in your paintings, actually. Is that better? Much better. That bit. Can you see a, a sky in there? Mm -hmm. Yeah? think so. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. yeah. When you paint a, um, a watercolour sky, you can't really see what it's going to be until you put some landscape on. But don't overwork it once you've done it. Yeah, don't say, keep well, doing it. It looks and, all yeah. right. So we'll, yeah. we'll leave that, you know, and then we'll yeah. dry it off and then we'll put some land on and see what we get. So what we need to do is put your brushes down, get this dried off, okay. dry it completely. So you can leave it, have a brew, or you can use a hairdryer. Not too close though get it dry and then we'll come back and we'll put some landscape on, yeah? Okay, yeah.